Bum, bum, ba. We have loose toys. Yeah, this doesn't happen that often. This tub actually should have gone down to the basement, you know, when we first moved in. So this is a little interesting, and we need to go through this. All the loose toys when we moved into this house were from the first floor. Packaged toys were under the second floor, and that's, you know, what we could get into the house from all the storage units. And then I destroyed all the loose figures. So the basement now has the loose figure collection and it actually is organized out already. And we went through, oh my gosh, probably about, same thing, about 400 tubs, maybe a bit more of just all loose toys, part bins, everything. None of it was done on camera. I had just chewed through it like around 2020 and 2019, more stuff. So let's hit this up because we have some vintage goodiness here. So right off the bat, we're going to hit up the uh, walkie-talkie. And this, it has its own charm to it because of how stupid it looks. Let's just be honest. If you flip the puppy over, it's by Durham Industries. And Durham's been around for many years. So this figure here was sculpted by somebody at Durham. And a lot of the employees at Durham are older employees from a previous generation. This is something I find really fascinating with a lot of the early 80s toys. When the big success came out of He-Man and Transformers and G.I. Joe, a lot of these toy companies had employees that just didn't see and understand what was coming from Japan. So Japan had built up all the designs and creativity for decades of all the robot designs from the basic robots in the 60s and the 70s. You're thinking about like... Tetsujin 28 and Astro Boy. And then the early 80s, we obviously have Diaclone and other killer robots. And then you take these American sculptors who have never experienced any of that and then say, draw a robot or sculpt a robot. This is what you come up with. This really generic looking thingamabob. It just shows how light years ahead Japan was. So it has its charm, but even as a kid, you can recognize this is just like this low-end standard toy. And a lot of toy companies struggled with trying to capture the essence that Takara and Bandai had created over just years and years of refining it. And this is one of those. And as a kid, when you receive this, at least I would be like, ugh, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a long rant for you. So this is all collection, and this is early collection from childhood, actual childhood toys here. So here we go. A radio. That's the best they could sculpt with Optimus Prime. That's just sad. Still a very unique, fun item. A lot of novelty items for Transformers, especially the later years. But stuff like this one is much, much more uncommon to get. And this is by a company called... Nasta, which again is an older style company, and they did a lot of stuff like this. I think that might be the end of the oddball stuff. Let's move on to bum, 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 Optimus Prime as a beetle mode. No, it's kidding. So this is the Battle Beast Beetle Base Wood. I have looks like two of them. I have the panels on the side. Let's pop this puppy open. Oh, nice cranking sound in there. And yeah, it looks to be complete, which is excellent. They run about 150 bucks right now, but as you can guess, I have zero interest in selling this. This is personal collection. I'm thinking, no, I'm missing the brown gun up there, but it might be in the bottom of the box. I just realized that. Let's put that one off the side. We have one more brown base. The head is, I know the head's flopping around in here. Oh. And there's the... We have two guns in there. And then we have one more gun down here. So that's pretty good. I just love these bases. I love Battle Beasts. For me, the top two toy lines, I love every toy line, as you already know. But the top two favorite toy lines of like 100% is Battle Beasts and Dino Riders. For Battle Beasts, I will pick up anything and everything that I can pretty much. And that's why I have two loose play sets because this was part of this big display of Battle Beasts I had, like 75, 80 figures all loose and displayed and little rock formations and the bases all set up. And this was part of it. And 
when we moved, it all had to be thrown to one tub, and this was the tub. So I think I'm just going to keep up with keeping two of each base, and let's see what we got in here that works out in that favor. Oh, we got another funky piece here. Here's Soundwave. Soundwave. Produced by Hasbro with HG Toys. And HG Toys did a lot of kid sets for armor, role play, as well as a lot of stuff in the 70s. And this is, I believe, was this the bubble blower? It's been a long time since I sat down. Obviously, oh yeah, with the little piece down there is the bubble blower. Uncommon to find. When you do find it, it's not big bucks. But when you find these novelty items like this in the original packages, very, very difficult to find. And would be decent amount of money. But again, not selling any of this stuff because this is all personal collection. It just, it just got stuck upstairs. We have the shock base. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, man. Oh, so missing the fin, missing the gun. Let's see what else we got cooking in here. I like, I like how you have to like tear its whole mouth apart to pop it open. So we have... Oop, it's falling apart in my hands. So there was a little gate up here, and we have the guns, and there was a little cover, I believe, here for the figures to stand on. No big, big boo-hoo. I already have... this. The other one should be loose complete, so, like, this is, like, a backup one. I just... Oh, man. I'm so happy with what they made for Battle Beasts, and I wish they made more stuff, more bases. It's just... Again, be happy with what you got. You, They made 120 figures, they made multiple vehicles. Most toy lines do not even reach a half of that. So I'm still very happy with how successful it was and how many they made. But you're still like, eh, I still want more. Here's another little bit of fading from being upstairs on display from the old... It's missing the back tail fin. I thought I was doing really well. So this kind of shows me that I was not remembering it ugh, as much as I thought I was. So I'm missing the gate up there too. And we have two guns. Wow. And I thought I was doing awesome with my collection. And guess not. We have Jetfire. A little bit of fading, which is happening more and more now. And it's pissing me off. I looked at my original, not childhood. But I bought it when I was like in high school. A box, dead stock, unused. Macross stickered. Really amazing shape. Jet fire, and it's already turning yellow, and I and it's not been in the sunlight. And it's just, mm. this one's a, a regular jet fire, still pretty good shape. I think I did the big jet fire purge a long time ago because I pick this stuff at the flea markets all the time, and I just, just jet fires, Macross, Valkyrie from Robotech. You gotta, and I just hoarded them like an idiot. And I remember I had like twelve of them at some point, and you're like. What am I doing? And they're all in various conditions. They're not all complete. So I just let all, all that stuff go. I think this one was the best of the best. So that one, no gun, but it might be in here. It might be in her box. It's just, this is the finale of the move. We're just like, toss it in there. Go, go, go. So I, <clears throat> this stuff got lost. Probably my childhood Skylinks. Got a broken neck. It's okay. Look at that flappy neck. <laughs> I got to clean him up. He doesn't deserve this. But yeah, oh, Skylinks, again, not an original to car design. Very strange when you start thinking about just the concept of a giant. Let's just say, let's call him a chicken for the moment because I like chicken. And then a Lynx. And you're just like, it works because they incorporated it. Oh, I have my leg broken on him. Because of Skylinks. And we remember from our childhood, but in general, like it's just a weird, weird toy that a company produced in Japan. Actually, I take that back. I don't think they ever produced it. That was one of the big things. But like, what were they thinking? Like, they sat down of all the concepts, battle tanks and spaceships and you know, cool insect robots. And they're like, nah, man, we're going to make it turn into a lynx and into a chicken. Coming back from a small break, we have Countdown. And he unfortunately took some brunt of yellowing because I did not close up all the windows. It was an upstairs porch. I had this wonderful display. And it was just, it was not the most smartest thing to do to lay all this wonderful stuff out and let the sun beat on it a little bit. It was, the playset is not my favorite playset. It's, let me see what I can do here. Uh, 
So I like giant play sets. We all do. But my problem with this, my beef, is it's just a giant brick. It, I'm not going to try to play with this at this moment. Just so fragile. But it's so big and it has so much potential. But look how thick this giant platform that goes upward. I know there's going to be strength test, durability, uh, sorry, stress test as they call it. And Takara is very keen on those things and quality of plastic. But I'd rather just have this thing be a larger play set than what it ended up being. And a lot of these MicroMaster sets are just kind of light on that. But that's just me. I'm crazy. And I'm also an older as an adult versus a child that we really have enjoyed getting Countdown as a kid. Oh, my God. So I'll probably have to replace this one. Thankfully, a lot of the parts are still in clean shape. And a base like this isn't costing that much. But the question, of course, is where in the hell is the rest of the guy? <laughs> uh, so we have part of the MicroMaster headquarters. We got bum, 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 one of the little turd monsters in there. So that's better than nothing, right, guys? I guess they split up in our tub that's downstairs already. And we're going to go through the Transformers sometime in the future because the Transformers, as you can already guess, has never been organized out. I just kind of slid them all in there. But all the action figures of Thundercats and He-Man, all those are bagged, prepared, cleaned, made sure there's no duplicates. They're all ready to go. But Transformers, we're going to definitely pile through and find a lot of extra stuff in there. So he's in pretty good shape. And I like him a lot. He's, he's funky doodles. Again... Lovely little oddball piece. What a American stars and American patriotism in this toy. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Did they change the stickers at all this with Europe? I don't think they did. If you guys didn't know, for G.I. Joe, they changed it to Action Force for Europe. And the American flags were all kind of like quietly removed. So this is just a funky, funky piece. Kind of also reminds me of like Evil Knievel style. But I'm still happy to have a nice clean one and it's not you piss yellow. Here's the Frenzy. Of all the novelty items that came out in America, the voice changer Frenzy is one of the most common to find. So it's a lovely piece. I like the fact that they actually designed the head correctly, unlike the previous Optimus Prime from the radio. And this company is Nasto once again. Just strange. I had one as a kid. No, my brother got one as a kid. I played with his and it's just... Man, I don't know, man. I guess it's an adult looking back as a child. And like, what was I thinking? Oh, no. So he got a beating. This is my childhood Firebird. And it is missing quite a lot and a lot of yellowing going on. So I'm going to keep him, obviously. But I thought I had a nice complete. Oh, that's not good. What just, no, I'm closing it down. This is why I don't want to play with all the toys too much for the yellowing on it. This big red piece. Oh, I broke the head. No, the little piece right there broke off his. It's not the end of the world, obviously. I'm not going to cry over this thing. Not like a $1,000 toy. But it's just kind of like be a little more careful with these things. But I can just glue that back. I'm not going to be upset about that. But yeah, I need to get a nice clean one. I got to see if where my personal other one is right now. Now I'm getting more like... Mm -hmm. nervous of all that stuff survive this transit here's a gun for the okay okay not bad so here we have the gun for the firebird base we have for the shark base that goes in the top i'm still missing the fins and then here's the other head for the beetle base this will... i'm about halfway through the bases and doing okay and not doing so well then we wrap it up with my childhood Scorponok, which once again, I left out in the sun a little too much. And at this point, he is my son. <laughs> it's an adult like holding a baby right now. Get the head in there. Oh man, I had so much fun with this. I've already told the story, but I'll tell it again. This exact Scorponok. Oh my God. I just want to get into like normal position mode. Like, yeah. So... Long ago, we have story time mode. Oh, look, hiding underneath there. Bum, bum, bum. Bird base gun. So long ago, my uh, grandmother took me and my brother to Toys R Us in Illinois. And she's like, you guys can choose one toy each. And then I was like, I'm not really one of those like greedy, greedy kids. But you're also like, man, if she's offering, I'm taking, right? 
So I looked at Triptychon, I looked at Scorponok. I believe I grabbed Triptychon first and I was like, I am pushing the envelope. He's like $50 retail. <sighs> so I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're motivating yourself. Yeah, let's do this. Let's try this. And my grandmother comes around the aisle from the, there's two aisles for action figures where we were. And she comes around the edge of the aisle with the shopping cart and in the shopping cart's Fortress Maximus, which was $89.99 at Toys R Us. And my brother, who has more cojones than I do when pushing the envelope, he took that piece, asked our grandma, can he have it? And she didn't flinch. And she said, yes. And I'm like, oh. you know, I thought I was doing the nasty, right? But I, I went up to her and I was like, look, Scorpinox like 40, Triptychon is like 50 or so. Can I have both of these? Because well, Mac got Fortress Maximus. And she said, yes. And that was just those happy childhood moments that stick with you to your adulthood and just make you smile. He's pretty much mostly complete, but I can't tell you what's going on until I get to the other bins. But a lot of parts are here, except for the more difficult little fast track guns. But we'll see. I already have a box, one of these open. So it's all good, man. It's all good. But it's just nice to see these guys again. But we're going to do a great video when we get through all that stuff. I can start purging. I mean, Diaclone trains. When I was in Japan, I was just picking up trains loose right and left. So I bet you when I go downstairs, it'd be like 15, 20 loose Diaclone trains. You're like, okay, you know, you're a moron. Let's purge. So I can't wait for that. I know you guys can't wait either. So let's continue on. Operation Purge of the Tubs. Unfortunately, we're not purging any of this.